Welcome. Today we're going to talk about the D780. I'm going to talk about the uh, the way I use it. Um, I've used Nikon's for well, digital Nikon's since 2007 or 8. Um, done well over 100 weddings, and and that has given me a, an advantage, if you like, um, to find to discover a way to use a Nikon camera which is quick, fast, efficient works every time, consistent, etc, etc. I'll, I'll tell you how I do that, maybe it'll help you. <clears throat> so first thing to say is that um, I'm talking about the D780, but this applies to any Nikon camera made since goodness knows when. Um, I'm going to talk mainly about the OVF, the through the, um, through the lens, metering, exposure, and so on, focus. Um, but I will also talk about live view, um, because the live view on, on the D780 is different to any other Nikon, um, I think also different to the D850. Um, I'm pretty certain this is the only Nikon with the Z6 focusing system used in, in, in live view. So I'll talk about how I use that as well, and how that makes this the, um, um, a brilliant camera for weddings. Um, it's so versatile, um, it just copes with everything I throw at it really easily. So, first of all, let, let, let's crack on straight into um, the essentials. The two things that make a good photo, or a usable photo even, is exposure and focus. The most important, obviously, I think, is is focus. If something is out of focus, it's it's just not a photograph. You just can't use it for anything. So focus is obviously critical to creating good photographs. Exposure, not quite so important, but there's only so much you can do in, in post-processing in Lightroom, <coughs> excuse me, to recover shadows if you're underexposed, to recover highlights if you've gone too far. Um, so exposure needs to be reasonably close. And all the other things that the camera does, all the other 60, 70, 80 menu settings pale into its insignificance compared to those two things. So that's really all we're gonna talk about. I'm not worried about white balance. I'm not worried about picture control and JPEGs and that sort of thing. Um, I do shoot in JPEG and RAW, but um, only use RAW files obviously for for processing in Lightroom. So, focus and exposure are actually linked. So it's not quite as straightforward as you might imagine. Um, and the whole object of, of the way I use a camera that I've developed over the years is to be able to go to a wedding, spend eight, nine hours there, take 1500 photos, and have to do almost nothing to the camera. It's there, it's ready, I can just take a shot there, I can take a shot of someone moving, I can take a shot there of something still, I can take a shot there out in daylight, I can take a shot there in a really dark room and I don't have to do anything in terms of changing the settings. Let's, let's dive into that. First thing you must do is back button focus. Uh, I'm not going to explain how to do that. There's 5,000 videos on YouTube telling you how to do that. Set back button focus. So you just press the back button all the time you're holding it, it's focusing, let go, it's fixed. You need the focusing mode to be continuous and then it will work. That means you can photograph anything moving by just holding it down and it will continually focus. If you're photographing something still, you can just press the button, it will focus in half a second, quarter of a second, whatever it is. Let go, focus is locked. End of story. Let me then skip to the exposure. Three methods the way the, the camera can measure the exposure. Matrix metering, center weighted, or spot. Matrix metering. Now, actually jumping back to the Sony, I digress slightly. I had to use, I've, I've always used spot metering, but when I had the Sony for two years, I had to use matrix metering. And the reason is, the Sony's got a, a big failing that if you're using the face detect and eye autofocus, uh, which is obviously a big selling point for Sony, and, and it's, it's very useful, 
the, if you're using spot metering on a Sony, it will not link to what you're actually focused on. So if you're using um, face detect, which picks a face up over here, the spot for metering is in the center. Now, if you go to, if you turn off face detect and just use um, a focus point, then it will link that focus point to the exposure. But the moment you turn on face detect, which can be anywhere in the screen, the, the exposure point just sticks in the middle and it means you can't use spot metering on the Sony if you've got face detect on. Uh, therefore, I had to use matrix metering and I kind of got used to using matrix metering um, in the two years that I had the Sony. As soon as I got the Nikon, immediately back to spot metering because Nikon link the spot to whatever is focused on. And the good news is that also applies to live view if you're using face detection. I digress slightly. So matrix metering on Nikon, I never use. The reason, you're giving control to the camera. The camera is trying to look at the scene to use some sort of algorithm to decide you've got a certain amount of bright, a certain amount of dark, something in the middle. Um, on the D780, it will take into account faces um, and it will try and come up with something that kind of works. And it, it gets you in the right ballpark. But if you go to an extreme situation where you've got a really bright sun, um, people actually in the sun, um, and then some dark shadows as well, it's just not gonna get it right. The safest, the most consistent, reliable way is to use spot metering, which is linked to the focus point on what you're focusing. Also, Nikon is better at recovering shadows in post-processing than recovering highlights. Um, on this camera, if, I've, if I have made a mistake, or if it's a scene with really, really dark shadows, I can get those shadows back, I can lift those by three or four stops and get that detail back. If I'm overexposed, or any part of the image is overexposed by two stops, I probably won't get that back. There'll probably be some parts that, where the highlights are blown, and once they're blown, you've lost it. That, that's, that's it, game over. So I always set the exposure compensation to minus 0.7. So that if anything, my images are coming out dark, I know I can recover that. If I've got someone in sun and I'm focused on their face and the sun is giving reflections because I'm slightly underexposed, I'm probably on the safe side. I probably, in almost every case, will not have any blown out highlights. It just gives me that consistently to know that I, I can get a shot in any situation. Uh, center weighted metering, I've never used it. I'm not even sure when you would use it, why you would use it. So I just, it's just completely ignored. So spot metering. So set your metering, which is that button there, set that to spot. And that will automatically link to the focus point. Which then brings us on to focusing. Uh, pretty well all Nikons have got several focusing methods from single point to dynamic, uh, dynamic 9, dynamic 25 is it, um, or dynamic the whole 51. You've got auto area um, and you've got group area. Not group area is only on the later cameras. I use group area. So this is where the camera uses five focus points and looks at those five focus points and assesses what to focus on. Now they're fairly close together, so unless you're really close to a subject, and I'm, I'm talking mainly about photographing people or animals or birds or something, it will, it will do a pretty good job of getting correct focus. Um, I might change that, I might go to spot, single spot, if I'm doing close up portraits and I really want to focus on someone's eyeball. Uh, but most of the time, the group area works well. If you've got a slightly older camera without group area, then I would go for D9, which works well for stationary subjects and if you're tracking someone, if you're trying to follow someone and you go slightly off target, 
the D9 will usually pretty well keep you in focus. That's how I use that. And remember, the exposure is now linked to that focus point. So many, many years ago, when I first started to do weddings, um, I found myself continually using the D-pad to move the focus point across the screen um, so that I could compose, I could move the focus point to where I wanted it, focus, get the shot. It wasn't too long before I realised that that wasn't the fastest way to do things and I missed a lot of shots. What I then developed, nothing clever, point and shoot. Everyone's been doing it since cameras were invented. So I now, oh well, I back then and now still use focus and recompose. So I have the, uh, the focus point on the center, sometimes maybe up one, and if I've got it in vertical mode, in portrait mode, I will have it t slightly higher than centre because normally someone's face is slightly above centre. So that gets me roughly in the right ballpark. But that's not really what it's about. It can be in the centre, it doesn't matter. I then hit the back button focus, give it half a second, I'm focused. But it's in the centre of the frame. I haven't got the right composition. What I then need to do if I wasn't, if I was using matrix metering exposure, I could just do the focus and then I could recompose, allow the camera to decide what the exposure was going to be, take the shot. No problem. I want more control. So with spot metering, that's linked to the focus point. So if I've focused and then move, then the exposure is not going to be based on my subject. It's going to be based on anything in the background or the sky or anything it could be way off so you need to lock the exposure this sounds complicated but it's not pretty well every Nikon camera will have not only the back button focus button the AF on button it'll have the AEL this one's AEL and AFL but AEL anyway so this is, that's the exposure lock button and you simply need to go into the menu and program that button to exposure hold. What that means is that if you press the button and hold it, the exposure is locked. The moment you let go, it's reset. So my way of shooting through the viewfinder is center focus point, spot, um, group area, or single point, back button focus, that's focused, I'm talking about stationary subjects, sorry, I should have explained, stationary subjects, back button focus, it's focused. Immediately just slide down, hit the exposure button, hold that, compose the shot, press the shutter, we're done. I can do that so quickly, it's just, well, it, it, it's just so easy to work with. I have no more fiddling to do than that, and I never do anything more than that for stationary subjects. However, of course, sometimes people are moving, and in that case, the only difference would be that I will move the spot, the, the, um, the focus point, to where I would prefer it. For instance, uh, Bride walking down the aisle with her dad. Um, I might decide that the composition looks better with with the bride over this side of the shot or maybe over this side of the shot. So I move the focus point, I've got a couple of seconds I can prepare, I just move the focus point to that point and then I would simply hold the back button focus down all the time. It's now tracking her as she moves and just take the shots as I want to. Something like the Right, throwing the bouquet and, and on the crowd behind or something like that. She's moving. This isn't a static subject. Again, I would put, I would use back button focus, hold that on because if she's only going to move three or four inches and she could well be out of focus. She could step to the side. So again, I would put the focus point where I want it, back button focus, hold that down and keep shooting. But it means the exposure is, is going to be correct. The focus is going to be correct. And if I then... 10 seconds later she's stopped and she's talking and laughing with her friends and she's not really moving very much 
then I can use the focus and recompose without changing anything at all on the camera. So that's how I use a traditional Nikon DSLR. However, let's now go on to live view. If you haven't got a D780 at this point, what I'm going to explain doesn't apply to you. If you're thinking of getting a D780, you might find this interesting. In live view, the exposure system is exactly the same. It's um, matrix, center weighted or spot. Um, and I don't change it for live view. Focusing areas are similar in that you have um, a small box, a larger box, a bigger box, and then the whole screen. And it is the whole screen. To use face detect, and everyone's done videos on YouTube complaining about how bad the Nikon is at, at um, being able to, to use face detect. It, you've got to press this button, you've got to go over here, you've got to do that, you've got to cancel this. And, uh, it's complete rubbish. <clears throat> Also area, if there's someone in the shot that you can focus on with a face, it will focus. It will pick up that face, put a box around it, the same as any other mirrorless camera does. Hit the button focus, focus and it will focus on that face. Now, an advantage that this has got over Sony, I can and I'm not sure, but certainly over Sony, I couldn't control which face the Sony focused on. And I had to have, in fact, I had three buttons set up to focus. Uh, face detect and IAF, another button if I didn't want a face picked up, and another button for manual focus because there were quite a few occasions when there was nothing the Sony would do to focus on something. And, and I would have to revert instantly to manual focus and I had a third button set up, I could do that and manually focus. Whereas on, on the Nikon, if it's picked a face up and that's not the face I want, I simply press the D-pad to go left or right and it will move across to the face that I want and then I focus. It's actually, in my view, much better than Sony. And if you're on spot metering, which I am, it linked that to whichever face, whichever eye, it's linked that, that, that you're focused on, that's the exposure you'll get. But I hear you say, if I'm on auto area and I don't want to focus on a face, I've then got to go in, I've got to change the focus area to a small box or something like that, move it around the screen and focus on that box. Well, no, that's not the way I do it. If you're in auto area, which you will be, I am anyway, and you press the OK button, you'll get a little box pop up in the center of the screen. And this is um, a dynamic tracking focus area. It's a fairly small box in the center. It's very obvious, it's white. The moment you press the back button focus button, it will focus on whatever that box is over. So, and if you hold the back button focus down, it, in fact, in fact, even if you don't hold the back button focus down, once it's got focus, on something it was it's locked on um, I would give you an example but it's a bit dark out here and, and I'm not really set up to show you the back of the screen very well but if I turn this on and I put live view on by the way live view is just pressing one button uh, and another advantage of this over Sony is I can just move the switch and I'm now in video I haven't got to play with a dial I've got completely separate menus for video and um, stills Brilliant, I digress. So I'm in a uh, wide area, um, I press the OK button and the box has come up in the center. Now I can move, let me try and show you this, I'm not sure if I can. Okay, I'll try. There's the box in the center. I can move that right or I can move that left, up or down, whatever I want. and. I've just brightened the screen up to try and make it more visible. Um, if I now press, if I now put the box over something I want to focus on, and let's pretend I want to focus on my piece of paper on, on the bench there, I then press the back button focus once. You can see the box has turned yellow. And if I let go 
and move the camera around I'm not sure you can see that let me do that again and I'm not sure this camera can focus quite this close anyway the box is still focused on my piece of paper and if I go completely off the screen so the paper is no longer even in the screen and then come back okay it, it didn't it didn't that time typical isn't it it's usually very good at actually focusing again on whatever I was focused on before it went off the screen um, if that happens the solution is simple press the OK button again it goes back to center hit focus it's back on my piece of paper and when I want to take a shot I simply press that and a sh shot is done and that method of shooting with live view um, I've tested it out on static subjects on moving subjects on the cat running across the garden on a car driving past at nearly 40 miles an hour and it is it's not 100 percent it's probably 85 90 shots out of 100 are going to be perfectly in focus the others will be slightly off and we're not talking about way off and the exposure links perfectly to that focus point so that is how i use the d780 and that is why i'm I have found it for the few weddings I've done during lockdown, um, back before Christmas, um, to be brilliant. And how I'm expecting this to be, for me, a perfect solution to what I want to use for my photography. If you have any questions, queries or anything about the D780 or Nikon in general, just let me know and, and I will try and get back to you or do a video. And just to make sure, of course, that you get future videos, please subscribe, hit the bell, and I look forward to doing the next video. Thanks very much. Bye.